Hey, <laughs> Eduardo Cominacci from the Ivory Tower. Hello. Today, I want to talk to you about a particularly not not that important concept from the Picatrix, and this is the concept of the signs of long or short ascension. Now, the signs of long and short ascension give um, give you a another tool through which you can benchmark your election you can get feedback from your election you can diagnose your election um, why well because the picatrix i'm gonna read right now a quote from the picatrix this is the section in book three chapter five it's from the mansions it's the chapter on the mansions of the moon uh, if she meaning the moon if she rises in a sign of short ascension the effect will be more swift and certain and if she rises in a sign of long ascension the effect will be slower this can be strengthened or weakened by aspects to the fortunes for if the moon ascends in signs of short ascension and an infortune is there, it will overturn and destroy the effect and oppress it. While if she ascends in signs of long ascension and a fortune is there, as opposed to an infortune, or aspects her closely with a favorable aspect, the effect will be accomplished quickly. And blah blah blah. An interesting magics. Now, from book one, chapter four, um, we read that let there be rising a sign of direct ascension for works of magic which are light, i.e., trivial and certain, and let there be rising a sign of tortuous ascension for more serious works. And for that reason, let the helpful planets be in a fortunate aspect to the working. For if there ascends a sign of direct ascension and an infortune is present therein, the work is destroyed and spoiled. Now, what are the signs of direct or short ascension? The Picatrix says that these are from Capricorn all the way to Gemini. Conversely, from Cancer to Sagittarius, these are called the signs of long or oblique ascension. And I've prepared a nice scene here with the Stellarium to which I'm gonna switch right now. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I know. Anyway, so, um, as you can see here, this is very much sped up. So, as you can see here, this is the ecliptic date. Uh, this is where Aries starts. We got two little squares here. This is where Taurus will start. One, two, this is where Gemini will start. And one, two, this is where Cancer will start, the sign of Cancer. And as you can see here, there's the symbol of Cancer. Now, the ecliptic, if I speed it up, you can see how it doesn't really rise in a regular way. It does this serpentine uh, oscillating movement during the day. Um, and of course, during the 24 hours of the day, all right, uh, during 12 hours, signs of long ascension will rise. During the other 12 hours, signs of short ascension will rise. Now the Picatrix says what it says about these signs and I'm gonna show you what exactly happens, what, what exactly is happening when, uh, when a sign of short ascension or long ascension rises and why the Picatrix says what it says. Now as you can see here, we can see that here Cancer starts. Uh, we can see that. Um, let me show you how much time Cancer uses to rise. How much time Cancer is on the ascendant. Let me go back to where Cancer is on the ascendant. Here we go. So, 
we are looking at the east this is the east and as you can see the ecliptic right now is intersecting um, is intersecting the horizon the eastern horizon right here and this is the ascendant the ascendant oscillates between the north and the south during the day this is the sun of course i have deactivated the atmosphere visualization because you can't see shit with it during the day of course now cancer is rising let me put it exactly on the ascendant and as you can see we got the time here it's nine o'clock and cancer is rising now let's see how much time does it take for cancer to rise let's go one hour two hours and even more and as we can see this is where uh, cancer leo sorry this is where leo is rising exactly here now leo is rising it's the ascendant right now is at zero degrees leo and this is where it's where, where cancer is so it's basically 11 20. if we go back we can see that from was it nine yeah from 9 to 11.20, that's 2 hours and 20 minutes for Cancer to rise. So we know that Cancer stays on the Ascendant and rises in a time of, 20, of sorry, 2 hours and 20 minutes. Conversely, let's go to Capricorn and let's see how much time does Capricorn take to rise. So from 9, let's go to 20 the, the 21 that's 9 p.m. so mm, let me see now Libra is there where's Capricorn here it is here is Capricorn now let's put it to the time where Capric when Capricorn rises. So as we can see, Capricorn is rising at 11.35 p.m. Now for Capricorn to reach, for the Ascendant to reach the next sign, we have about two hours and five and five minutes around two hours and five minutes that's slightly less um, that's uh, how much a quarter uh, that's 15 minutes less it's not so much but it's still less um, now let's take this example and put it to the extreme if Cancer is the sign where the signs of long ascension start and Capricorn which is exactly at its opposite is where this is it's the sign where signs of short ascension start Then in the middle meaning in Aries and in uh, Libra uh, These two signs should be the signs where the differences are the greatest and so let's go and let's see where here we go let's take the rising of oops let's take the rising of aries which is here now aries is rising exactly on the eastern horizon at 4 15 a.m let's see how much time does it take to aries for aries to rise one hour and there it is so from aries to taurus that's 533 and aries is 420 huh 420 to 533 that's one hour 15 minutes we are very much um away from the two hours of cancer and capricorn 
So Aries takes one hour and fifteen. What was it? One hour and fifteen minutes. One hour and ten. Yeah, one hour and ten. Let's go to Libra. Should be at seventeen. Here's Libra. Let's see how much time does it take for Libra to rise. So one hour and fifteen minutes for Aries. Let's see for Libra. Libra is on the ascendant at four fifteen p.m. and one hour, two hours. Two hours and that's uh, six forty-three. Was it four fifteen? Yeah, four fifteen six forty. That's two hours and a half. So you can see how it's exactly the double. Um, Libra rises in two times as much time. As, sorry. Um, that was bad. Anyway, Libra takes exactly too much, two times as much, um, two times as much time uh, to rise as compared to Aries. Um, now, let me animate this in a fast way. You can see that with Libra. What the fuck did I just do? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, I'm still getting acquainted. So, all right, you can see that uh, Cancer is... Uh, Jesus, all right. Uh, take my word for it. You can see that starting from Capricorn, the signs become more inclined. Um, and the ecliptic becomes more inclined. Start, they rise in a more inclined way. Uh, starting from Cancer onward, the ecliptic starts to go, go back to a more perpendicular way um, to the horizon. And you can see it here. You can see how the ecliptic changes and tends to be perpendicular and then, uh, and then inclined, starting with Capricorn. Then from Cancer starts to become more perpendicular. With Libra, it reaches the maximum and then it goes back. And then with Aries, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is where Libra, as you can see, it's very much perpendicular to the horizon. And then with Aries, it reaches, where's Aries? Aries is here. It reaches the most inclined point. Um, as you can see, the ecliptic now is inclined and rises in an inclined way. And during the day, this movement keeps on going. So as you can see, as soon as it reaches Cancer, it starts to become inclined again and it goes perpendicular. So from Cancer, the signs of long ascension start, then from Sagittarius they onward, they end and with Capricorn, the signs of short ascension start. And as you can see from Capricorn onward, the signs tend to be more inclined. And while they rise, they rise and take much less time. Um, even taking, uh, you know, Aries takes one hour and 15 minutes. And Libra, on the other end, takes two hours and a half to rise. So, of course, this has uh, implications. Many, hello, my beautiful face again. This has many implications for um, our elections because, as you can see, there is now a symbolic reason behind this concept of signs of long and short ascension. Signs of short ascension tend to rise in a much quicker way than the signs of long ascension. So it makes sense, symbolically, um, that if you want a sh shorter or swifter or more certain effect to take place in your astrological, magical and talismanic uh, endeavors, it makes sense to have a short ascension sign 
on the ascendant excuse me and if you want something more stable more long term um, or if you're just wondering what the fuck is going on with your talisman and why it's not manifesting or it's taking so long to manifest its effects then you may very well have a sign of long ascension on your ascendant of course there are myriad of other factors to take into consideration for the swiftness of the manifestation of your effects in the talismans you make uh, the speed of the moon, the modality of the sign uh, the cadency of the moon, the lord of the ascendant, if malefics are present in the angles, etc, etc so yeah, now you got the symbolic reason behind uh, this astronom astronomical phenomenon and this concept, this reasoning and why the Pikachu says uh, what it says about signs of long and short ascension uh, it makes sense um, that your effects will be swifter if a sign that is swift on the ascendant is present there and, if it, and it makes sense that the effects will be longer or will take longer to manifest if on the ascendant is present a sign of long ascension which takes much longer to rise so yeah consider this in your elections and if you want to make a donation if you want to take my services book my services you get everything in the description box below to contact me to make a donation to buy my talismans and stuff this has been eduardo costa from the ivory tower and i'm going back to the ivory tower because i got covid i'm all right but my nose is starting to be kind of a nuisance you know i'm getting out of it i everything is all right it's just uh, you know when you burp uh, you know when you drink soda and you burp through your nose yeah that's how it is it's just less intense but more permanent it's it's permanent but less intense i've got like i, I feel like the blood inside of my nasal cavities 24 7 i also lost like 30 40 percent of smell and taste although i, I do still feel um smells and tastes <sighs> i'm doing everything i can to fight it and it's going away i'm already past the uh, the worst uh, i have to say it's been pretty light on me thankfully so i'm all right don't worry so yeah um now you know what is the astronomical reason behind the symbolical reasoning behind the concept of sh short ascension and long ascension signs you know i always say that astrology has um astrology is like the symbolical reading of of astronomy but it's not exactly like that because if you start to read symbolically the the astronomical factors the astronomical phenomena um, you can find yourself in some pretty bizarre places sometimes it's not really exactly as you think it is um, the astrological symbolical meaning behind an astronomical phenomena is there but it's not what what, what you thought <clears throat> but anyway this is one of those instances where um, you can see how the astronomical phenomena is um, the phenomenon is extremely linked with the symbolical counterpart its symbolical counterpart now here in this example being the swiftness of the manifestation of the effects and yeah it's interesting it's 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 very interesting so yeah eduardo signing off goodbye